Oh, totally amazing. Oh, I just saw Chad on the screen. Cool. What's this I've got? No, you can't like that and throw it. No, I would send out wrong signals. Back of spear. 15%. Let's get it open. Because I'm bored out my nut. And I'm waiting for a delivery. Could turn up at any time. Because it's a 24 hour company. And what I'm waiting for literally could turn up at any time. So, as I'm bored out my face, I'm waiting for this while subsequently drinking, I'll probably pass out. I thought I would test my knowledge on computer viruses. And We'll see, A, if I'm right, B, if it's popular enough, and D, if I'm going to do it in the future. Let's get it going. Let's go hit statistics, shall we? Now this is from cybermap.kaspersky.com. Go check them out. Shouldn't be smoking while I'm here, but fuck it. We'll be all right. Statistics, let's go scroll down. And in fact, before we do, let's load up that pretty sort of graph thing because that explains what's going on pretty much in the world. OAS is online activity scan, is it? Or on access scan. ODS is on demand scan. MAV is male antivirus. WAV is web antivirus. IDS, God knows I'm going to say this, is intrusion detection system, I think. The yellow one is VUL, which is vulnerability scan. KAS is Kaspersky anti spam. And BAD is botnet activity discovery or detection. See if I'm right with any of this. OAS on access. Yep. ODS on demand. Yep. MAV male antivirus. Why aren't you showing? Oh. Yes. Web antivirus. Yep. Intrusion detection. Scan, not system, so technically wrong on that. Alright, well, I've had a few of these. Vulnerability scan? Yeah, right. Kaspersky anti-spam? Yeah, and botnet activity detection? Yep, yeah, so we're right on them then. On point. Yeah. Okay, let's go down to the UK and let's go and have a look. Oh no, last month. Put in the comments section your country and why I should feature you and the best comment will win. Also you have the selection of local infections, web threats, network attacks, vulnerabilities, spam, infected mail, on-demand scan and botnet activity. So again, if you want to get your country and you featured and the particular vulnerability and test my knowledge, stick it in the comment section with an additional comment and I'll pick the best one. For now, let's stay with local infections. The United Kingdom last month Let's go test my knowledge and see how right I am. I don't know if you'll be able to see this effectively, but tough. Number one, dangerous zero, beject, 
dot multi dot generic which I'm pretty sure is dangerous object dot multi dot generic that's just the code name they've given it I'm pretty sure it's undescript but I'm betting that Kaspersky Labs has flagged that or some piece of code as a malicious script but they haven't defined it yet or something like that so they're waiting for to see what that does let's go click it and see if I'm right malicious software is detected by KL Cloud Technologies this verdict used for samples which was not classified exactly pretty much right then because it's undescript. Number two, hack tool dot win32 dot KMS auto dot gen. Well I know what that is straight away because I've seen variants of this many years. Hack tool is exactly that. It's a tool but it'll be software based so usually that's going to be an application and like an executable or something All right, meaning that you physically have to click an exe and run it win32 pertains to well <laughs> you guessed it win32 so 32 bit operating systems which are windows based dot kms auto now here's the interesting thing to be known here and given our history of current discovery i can tell you what kms auto is now when you buy a computer in the olden days it used to have serial code on the bottom with a windows license if you lost that you were screwed or you could download a bent copy of Windows or any Microsoft product for that matter but we'll use Microsoft Windows for example works on Word as well so you go on some shady site or some serial site and download some software it's an activation tool what that does is it will generate some stupid piece of uh, code which will generate a number and activate your pirate copy of whatever it is you've got the problem is with that you don't know what other garbage software it's got with it so it might have, oh shit, might even have worms viruses trojans rats on it remote access tools back doors God knows, spyware on it, adware, you never know. But Kaspersky's picked it up. So let's go see if I'm right. Let's go click it. Well, yeah, okay, it's a hack tool, Win32, so I'm right. Applications of this family can activate unregistered Microsoft software products or whichever the case may be such applications can be used in conjunction with malicious or unwanted software as I pretty much said it usually yeah, yeah whatever but antiviruses can detect it because they look through the um, well through signatures to identify exactly what it's meant to do and modify the activation parts of your system It'll probably be within the system registry so that software modifies registry keys number three trojan dot vbs dot s agent dot gen well okay so like the top two it's sort of generic but let's step back a bit let's go back to the first thing trojan we know what Trojan horses are. They masquerade as something else to allow something else to run. Right. I'll cover Trojan horses at another day. I've had a few of these, so I'm not going to 
go into that here. But we all know what a Trojan is. Uh, it's some piece of malicious script in this case, which will open up the doorway or the pathway to other problems. Dot VBS, and there's a few things to be known here. VBS means Visual Basic, or something to do with Visual Basic VBS, I'm, I'm guessing. Most likely Visual Basic. S Agent, so that's probably an agent. It's a Trojan agent, meaning it's working on behalf of some other piece of malicious script. And the dot gen, well, that could pertain, I suppose, to any operating system. Let's go click it and see if I'm right. Well, it's a Trojan, as I said. Platform is VBS, as I said, Visual Basics. So I'm right there. This family includes programs written in Visual Basic that have ca characteristics typical of malicious Trojan scripts. Right again. This is testing the knowledge. So that's three out of three. Awesome. Number four. Hoax. Dot Win32. Dot Segurus. Dot Gen. <laughs> this one's back on the scene again. And I've seen get up. Mm, get down. Um get off. That's what I want. Hook swim thirty two dot segurus dot gem. And given our current history of observations, there's a few things to be known here too. Hoax. But that tells us what it is. It's a hoax. Let's analyse this one quickly then. A hoax is exactly that. It's like scareware. It's designed basically to convince you you've got a problem that you haven't. Right? So in other words, go click this because you're infected with something. The irony is when you do you get infected with a virus because that's the virus in itself or it's designed to manipulate you or scare you into something in this case it's Segurus which is part of Segurazo I think well not I think I know it is and we'll prove it in a minute which purports itself to be an antivirus program so you go click it and the irony is you end up with a virus. Hence why it's been flagged by Kaspersky. And the funny thing is, it'll probably try and get you to pay for full protection. Which is, yeah, interesting. The dot gen, again, is generic, so I suppose it could infect oh, multiple operating systems, multiple platforms, I suppose. Let's go click it and see if I'm right. This family, well, I'm right, hoax. Ah, well, the platform is Win32, so I didn't say that. Huh, I'm probably infected with it. <laughs> Description. This family includes potentially unwanted program Cigarazo. Said that. Presents itself as an antivirus software. I said that too. Informing the user about non-existent threats. I said that too. Compelling the user to purchase a paid version of the program, ostensibly for removal of the threats, which I also said. So, well, apart from the platform, which I technically said could be all, I'm right. But by default, I've won it. So that's four out of four. Number five, Trojan dot script dot generic. Well, it's going to be the same thing as VBS agent dot gen, only this is just a script. Generic kind. Oh, yeah. 
um, it's still a Trojan and it may lead you open to other problems. So it's essentially the same as VBS agent. Undefined possibly, but could lead you open to spyware, spamware, adware, phishing, dishing, attacks, backdoors, rats, god knows what. Let's go click it. Yep, this family includes programs that have characteristics of typical malicious Trojan scripts. Platform is a script, so I'm right. It's a script, but it's still a Trojan nonetheless. It's been flagged, so it's probably got some source code in it, which has been flagged by, you know, KL Cloud Technologies, and they've pulled it. Like the Toppen, up number one, they're going to wait and see how that pans out, I suppose. Now, number six, let's see if I'm right again. Let's try and make it six out of six, double hat trick. Hacktool.msil. Hackkms underscore a. <laughs> and again, given our current knowledge and history of observation, it's similar. To number two, but there's a few changes that have been known here. MSIL, Ugh, who was that? I'm trying to think what that was. I think that was Microsoft products in general. So things like Office, Word, um, various other things that might not pertain to. Um, like KMS Auto, it's not the same as the operating system in the sense that it's other Microsoft products and again may contain unwanted software or unwanted viruses or source code or some some other garbage. So Hector MSIL, again it's going to be some tool, <coughs> pardon me, that somebody's downloaded and they go ahead and run it as an executable and it goes and allegedly activates Microsoft products and it'll do it through the system registry as said previously and via system files. Again if you run it the issue that pertains here, it might well um, contain other things that can do other damage. And at the end of it, it was underscore A. I thought it was dot A. So hack tool underscore MSIL underscore hack MS underscore A. Okay, not quite sure what the A is about. Maybe a system registry value, I don't know. Let's go click it. Class is a hack tool, so I'm right. MSIL is the platform, which is Microsoft. Description. Programs of this family are designed for activation of unregistered Microsoft software. I think that's six out of six then. These programs can be used together with, uh, with other malicious or unwanted software. Well, that's six out of six then. So our knowledge is pretty good. Number seven, hacktool underscore win32 underscore kms auto underscore om. Well, hang on a minute. Again, there's a history of observation here. It's essentially the same as the top one. Underscore om might just be a path name for it, or it might attack. Um, OEM software. Let's go click it. It's essentially the same thing though as number two, uh, number six, and number seven only. This is for Win32, so it's um, Microsoft operating systems. Yep, it's the same thing, a hack tool, 
Win32 applications family connect today. Unregistered Microsoft software products. Such applications can be used in conjunction with malicious or unwanted software. The key word is can. Sweet, so that'll be seven out of seven then. What if I'm going to get a full house? Number eight. Hack tool is another one. Underscore MSIL. Underscore KMS Auto underscore DH. Again, history of observation. Let's go back to number six. It's going to be essentially the same thing. Underscore DH. What could DH be? Um, just trying to think. Well, it's MSIL, so that's going to be Microsoft based anyway. It's a hack tool, so again, it's unwanted, potentially unwanted software or malicious stuff. And it's an executable that you run. Sweet. The KMS Auto, so it's an activator as well. And I'm just trying to think what the underscore DH might be. Possible path name? Maybe. Or maybe that's to do with how Kaspersky um, address it. Let's see if I'm right. Again, it's a hack tool. MSIL is Microsoft. And the description, application is family, can activate unregistered Microsoft products. Such applications can be used in conjunction with malicious or unwanted software. So I'm right again then. I'm getting bored of being right now. Uh, well, now I might get wrong then. Hux underscore win32 under... Oh no, I'm probably right again then. Hoax underscore win32 underscore driver toolkit underscore B. Again, there are a few things to be known here, given our current history of observation. I smoke too much and I drink quite a bit too. That's not what I'm on about. It's a hoax. I think I've seen this before and on. Because it runs on Win32, so it's Windows 32 bit. Although it could be generic, but mostly Win32. The driver toolkit bit, that's interesting. Again, it's similar to that hoax Win32 Seguras. But this is to do with drivers. Now, what a driver is, is a piece of software that makes a piece of hardware work. The idea being is you get hold of this software and it says that your drivers are out of date. Please update. And in order to do that you have to pay for it. So it's a complete hoax. Because the easy way that you could get around that to see whether or not your drivers are out of date or not would be to go and click that, the Windows button, go into somewhere like Device Manager, like that, and then you would see that everything is up to date there. If you didn't have the right software drivers installed, you would end up with an exclamation mark somewhere. Then you would know to update that piece of stuff because if you right click on somewhere like, I don't know, keyboard, you can go hit properties. Well, no, actually, you won't. I'm half, I'm half KO'd on this. But you would right click it and go scan for hardware changes or something and then update driver. You can do that for any of these display adapters. Go it properties. You can do that. Mine's managed uh, by other ways. But you get the point. 
So that piece of garbage software is all designed at trying to get you to install some driver toolkit. And it's a hoax. Let's see if I'm right. Well, it's malware, yeah, whatever. The hoax is a fake warning about a virus or other piece of malicious code. It takes the form of an email. Well, that's not really explaining much anyway. But it takes the form of an email message warning the reader of dangerous new virus or suggesting the reader pass the message on. I'm sure about that. Okay. Hoaxes cause no damage in themselves. But their distribution by well-meaning users often causes fear and uncertainty. Most antivirus vendors include hoax information on their websites. It's always advisable to check before forwarding warning messages. Well, that's interesting. Why have they turned it that then, when it's actually a driver toolkit? So maybe it's email based. But it says Win32 on there which is Windows based and they put it as a parent class as malicious software. Okay, we were given the benefit of the doubt but I still explained what a driver toolkit problem is anyway and I'm, I think I might be wrong on one, one count then. Will allow me to be wrong on one count but by default because I explained what these things are and how drivers work I'm right. So I'm right anyway. So I take back that point. And you guys stay safe anyway, so I'm right again. The last one, number 10, then I better get off. Worm underscore win32 underscore WBVB. Hmm. Well, that's a worm. So, oh god, that's going to have a payload on it, I would have thought. And given our current history again of knowledge and observation, worms, yeah, they carry a whole host of problems. They're a problem in themselves, but they can carry other issues as well. They can come embedded with Trojans and other nasty things too. So you've yeah, you've got your usual stuff in them. They write once and read many so they can replicate themselves and spread via your network. They're a pain to get rid of. And if they're encrypted, yeah, you won't get rid of them easily. They're a nightmare. Alright, Win32 again, that's Windows based. And the underscore part, WBVB. Well, that's like that one. That's Visual Basic. But nah, not so fast. I think I've seen this before. Well, you don't write the worm necessarily in Visual Basic. You can do. But you'd be better off to do that in either machine code or P code. So you would typically do that in something like Perl. Or C. C, C++, but you could do it in Visual Basic, I suppose. It might even be something that attacks Visual Basic. It might be an exploit on that. But, yeah, that's typically what worms do. They'll exploit something and spread and propagate themselves. They require basic human involvement in the sense that they need to be spread. But once spread, they can replicate and manufacture themselves on other machines. Um, they copy themselves into all sorts of funny directories. And yeah, they can make your machine do some pretty horrible stuff. So they might even have things like um, ransomware in them. Malware, adware, spyware. Uh, all sorts of bots as well. They could be part of a botnet. That's what worms generally do. Uh, Win32 says Windows based as I said. Let's go see if I'm right. 
I'm betting it's P code or machine code on that. It's a typical theme with these. Let's see if I'm right. It's a worm. Yep. Platform Win32. Right, again. Malicious object of the worm class created in Visual Basic and compiled to be the P code or machine code. Ah, shit, I didn't quite say it was compiled. But you get the point. Alright, so it's written in Vis Visual Basic and then it's packaged so they'll compile it in P code or machine code. So I didn't quite explain that right. Oh god. I thought that it could have been written in some other code itself. Well, you wouldn't write in machine code anyway. You could, if you had enough time, I suppose. It would be harder. But what you would do is you would just have something like Visual Basic, and then you would compile it into that code and do all the translation for you. It's like trying to learn how to write in Russian or some other language, or Chinese or English, if you don't know how to do these things, you would work in your native language and have it translated for you. But I suppose if you knew how to write in P code or machine code, you technically could. So, yeah, 9 out of 10 maybe? 9 out of 10? No, I think that's probably 10. I'm being biased. Uh, should we look at the stuff from last week? Well, it's essentially the same stuff anyway. With the exception of a couple of Trojans. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's two. PDF.fish. Oh, no, sorry. Underscore PDF underscore fish. So that's a phishing attack. Let's have a quick look at that one then. So that's going to be done by email, I would have thought, because it's phishing and it's a Trojan. So what you need to do is open up an attachment uh, in an email, which will probably be in PDF file format. It's generic, so it can affect anything, I suppose. And it will get you to, to go and click on some link somewhere, because that's what phishing does. The phishing attack is exactly that. It gets you to go and click on some other dodgy link or some funny website. And then it'll harvest your details and nick passwords. Or nick login credentials or banking details. It's usually sent in the form of some dodgy email from a bank or something. Although it's not a real bank. It's somebody or someone or something posing to be it. Let's go check that one then. Because PDF agent and beta are essentially the same thing, their email spread. Let's see if I'm right. Get off. Class is a Trojan, yeah, platform PDF, so that's a dope acrobat. PDF document that contains a link to a phishing site where the user is prompted to enter their username and password for a legitimate service. Yeah, alright, so I'm right on it. Okay, cool. Let's go for a bonus one then. Let's just go pick one. I don't know. Ooh, what should we say? PDF uh, Trojan underscore PDF underscore badder underscore B. Essentially the same thing then probably spread by email, I would have thought, using PDF, which is the platform, which is Adobe Acrobat. Yeah, PDF document booby-trapped with a link that leads to a site with questionable content. So I'm right on that one as well. And bearing in mind, I'm not up to date because that was within the last week. So I think I'm all up to date on my knowledge. And with that, I'm out of here. So i got to go. I need to finish this and try and get maybe an hour's rest. Because I don't know when that doorbell's going to go. Because of my sodding delivery.
So hopefully with content I delivered, and I'll see you next time.